Hi guys, this is Dave from Dave's Vintage Apple Tech, and we're going to do a update. As you know, we've been working on this battery pack for some time now, and uh, just going to give you a quick update here, uh, some information that I have found out recently, and uh, we'll be back in 10 seconds. And as you know, I have a couple of those PowerBook 1400 series laptops and the batteries are no good in them. So we've been trying to rebuild this and we did rebuild this battery, but uh, the computer does not see it. And we've done various things. I do have a manual on that computer, an actual manual from the day. And uh, it tells you different things to do if you're having battery issues. And uh, I've reset the power management switch. I've done a P PRAM reset. And to no avail, it still does not see this battery, even though this battery's got a full charge on it. So I've been doing a little bit more research on the components on the board here. So this is under the other battery pack. This is actually the one that was damaged. And um, if you notice, um, I was telling you guys earlier, um, now, I, now I freed these components up, they're bent down over the board. Uh, this one I haven't uh, have not identified yet. I have to take it to work to use the microscope to see if I can get any numbers off in here. I think there are some numbers. I had to get all the hot glue off of it so I could bend it up. But this other one, um, like I said, I thought it was a transistor, and uh, actually there's a little bit more to this thing than that. And uh, what I found, there's all kind. I, I can read the numbers on this uh, thing real fine. They're very plain. I used my phone, zoomed it in. I can see them real clearly. This is the model number of the chip here, and this is actually a type of chip. Apparently, this has a uh, ROM chip to it, and it uh, works in either 48 or 8-bit code, apparently. And so I know the manufacturer was Malaysia, and uh, but yeah, uh, there's quite a bit to this thing. But they use this thing for various applications, and uh, PC board identification, network node ID, equipment registration. So this has actually got a program on it, it looks like, because there's some other information on these uh, chips here. Now, you see this first line right here. It's actually, it's a DS2401. That's the model number of it. And uh, I know that pin one is the data line on it. I'm not sure what pin two or three is uh, totally yet. I know one's ground, but I'm not sure what the other one is. So my thinking is this is probably what lets this battery con uh, to communicate with the, uh, the com computer. And uh, so this might be a proprietary thing. I'm not sure. There's all kinds of different numbers. There's several different rows. There's another set of numbers like that. I just key those in. I don't get anything on it. There's another, uh, then there's the Malaysia, which that's the manufacturer, and there's another code below that. That's probably a date code. But uh, this one is the only thing that brings this up, and this is the device. Now, uh, my issue is, is that could be why it's not seeing it. Maybe there's something wrong with this. I don't know. And I've been working on just finding all kinds of information on this. So basically, it just tells you the description on it. You know, it's uh, it's an enhanced silicone serial number is a low cost electronic registration number that provides absolutely unique ID, which can be determined with a minimal electronic interface. Uh, and then it talks about using the factory. It's got a 64-bit ROM and a unique 48-bit serial number and an 8-bit CRC. I'm not sure what that is. But anyway, uh, the operation of it is it's, a, it's an internal ROM, and it's accessed via a single data line. So there's a code on it. So like I said, if that code is corrupt, 
or damaged, that will probably not let the battery work. Um, I'm still learning, so don't take this as gospel. I'm still learning on this. I've been, like I said, I've been, I've been spending hours trying to research the data on this thing, and um, it's it's frustrating because you know it should be something really easy to uh, do. Now, uh, like I said, um, I have the other board because the batteries came out of that other case, and that's a 4,000 milliamp hour. And I took the board off of that, and I basically I just swapped out all the components from here to here, because as you remember, you watching last video, I had voltage readings and all these pins. Uh, after I did the swap with the board, now I just have voltage on that pin and that pin being the hot and the negative. And one of these is the data line, uh, one of these is the battery ID, and I'm, I forget exactly what the other one's for. It's been a very frustrating project. Something that should only have took me uh, actually a couple videos to do, I'm still doing videos on this. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this for you guys too because if you guys run into this issue, hopefully this will help you as well. And I also appreciate all the feedback that I get on this. I've had a lot of people uh, give me some ideas and I do appreciate the feedback. Also, um, if you know any more about that particular chip, um, that'll be good. Um, and like I said, I have to find out what this other component is. Uh, it says R1, which would tell me that it's a resistor. So that's what I'm kind of thinking it is, R1. Because that's usually uh, on a circuit board, it'll say R1. That generally means resistor 1. I have no idea what the value is on it. I'm going to take a mi my microscope at work, zoom in on it, and see if I can get uh, a uh, reading on it here as far as the um, the value of it because obviously there's no color code on it and uh, but yeah so that's where we're at for this here and uh, yeah now you see the on the back of this too the uh, all that solder mask is coming off here I'll have to get some solder mask and put back down on this thing but anyway guys yeah this has just been a quick update um, um, like I said, I want to get this thing going because that'll make those laptops portable again. I mean, that's the whole idea of it, being able to, to carry it from one room to another or another location on battery power. And uh, it ain't happening right now. Uh, and like I said, I've tried this in both my machines. The one that I use for parts, I put it in my nice one. I did all the PRAM resets in it. I did the power management system. And even the, the operating manual tells you to, you know, to do a certain things if it's not reading the battery. And I did it, and it's not working. So I'm just kind of not sure what the problem is. So that's why I'm thinking it's maybe a bad component on the board. But I got to find out the values of them, and then uh, actually uh, be able to test this a little bit better if there is a way. Um, I just tested like a regular transistor, and that part works. But apparently that's not the right way you, you check it. So, um, yeah, guys. So, anyway, I just want to also give you guys this little update. Uh, we're actually up to 105 subscribers now, and I really appreciate you subscribing. It means a lot to me. And so, anyway, guys, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, um, subscribe, and click the bell. I appreciate it. And so this has been a quick video. This is Dave, and I will see you in the next video. Have a good day. Bye.